Metadata inside of Alma Photo Raw is broken up into a few very simple to understand sections. Using a tab system that's underneath the keywords and description box segment of the metadata pane is how you navigate through it. Today, I'm going to help you understand a little bit more of what metadata you should add and what metadata you may not even need to add. So stay tuned and let's get into the video. Welcome back to another video right here on Free Will Photos. I want to give a quick disclaimer when it comes to metadata. If you feel that the information is not going to be helpful or safe for you to enter, I don't recommend you do it. So use your best judgment. Also, throughout the video, if you find value in this content, go ahead and smash the like button. And if you're new here looking for on one photo raw content, hit the subscribe button. I release videos on a consistent basis, helping new photographers navigate using on one photo raw and becoming a little bit more savvy with it each and every time they open the software. If that's you hit the subscribe button and do not forget to hit the bell icon. Now, Let's go ahead and jump into today's video of metadata. As you can see here on the screen, I have opened the metadata pane. I'm inside of the browse module and in the metadata pane, I'm checked on the none section right now. You can identify that by this little segment here that says none. Not to insult your intelligence, just thought I'd throw it out there. All right. Uh, the very first segment of metadata that I recommend everybody fills in is your name or your company name for the author. Now, my name is Chris, so I'm just going to put Chris in there. You can also put a description. The photos that I have here today are from a photo walk, so I'm just going to put photo walk. And then you can also add your keywords, photo walk, right? We'll go with that and outdoors. You get the picture when it comes to keywords. I'm not going to make this overly complicated. Now where the magic actually happens with metadata. The first tab that I'm going to go over is the EXIF information. This is information that is captured from your camera. EXIF stands for exchangeable image file format. All this really means is when your camera generates an image, it saves all of the settings used to capture that image. And it also adds in a few extra pieces of metadata that you can see here. Now, if you have a camera that photographs and captures GPS, you'll see those coordinates come up here. Uh, and if you don't, then you'll get something that looks like this. I personally have not found any use for user comment, but if you know how to use the user comment, what I'd like you to do is comment down below in this video and then let us all know how you get after using the user comment section in the EXIF tab. Now, as you move further down, you start to see the camera settings, which you have been able to see in the info tab. Now, if you're not seeing the info tab, you may need to click on the little bar that says info to get that to pop up. But everyone is probably familiar with the info tab. And a lot of this information is already up here. The difference between the EXIF data and what you get in the info tab is really down here in the exposure program, uh, which I was on aperture priority for these shots and the uh, metering mode, which could say anything from matrix to multi-segment to spot. It just depends on how your camera captures that. Nonetheless, this is how all in photo raw reads that data off of your image from your camera. Now we're going to move on to the tab that you're going to make your money when it comes to creating metadata for your images. This is something that on one photo raw does not have any capability of knowing before you add the information. Now you can make a preset uh, because I did kind of skip over that, but there's a, a area up here where you can load presets. And if I click on it, you can see I have a few presets already in there. I'm going to show you how to make one here in a second. Uh, so in order to really protect yourself, you're going to need to add in a few uh, areas on this particular or on all of your images. I recommend that you do this. 
The very first one is your contact information. Again, use your judgment of what you want to enter into this area. Now, I like to put my country, which is United States, because that, I, oh, I guess I put that in the wrong area. Take that out of the postal zip code. All right. What I like to do is put country because that lets everyone know that I'm from the U.S. And then, of course, I'll put my email and my website. And I guess I should probably put my last name. And all that lets me uh, have the ability to do is if my image gets t stolen or used inappropriately, I can at least verify this information because I have access to these and it has my name baked into the file. You can go as far as you want, you know, job title, photographer, superhero, whatever you want to put in there. All right. The next thing is the content of your image. Now, this is where if you're creating fine art, maybe you'll put a headline of what that particular image is. If you are doing editorial work, maybe this is where you tag, you know, uh, person, uh, whatever their name is, giving a speech to a crowd, whatever. Right. If you're doing editorial, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not, don't worry about it. Uh, but that's all that I would really put into this section. Uh, and, and again, let me know in the comment section below if you have anything for a subject code. I haven't found any use for that or a description writer. Again, I think that this is for the editorial portion. Uh, I don't do editorial, so I can't really comment too much more on that. Now, the next part is talking about the image itself and information of where the image was captured. Now, this particular image was captured in Pennsylvania, so I'm going to put PA. And it was in Middle Township. And it was in the USA. All right. Very simple there. Uh, I haven't found any reason to use this information. I don't have a scene code or anything like that. Uh, maybe this would be appropriate if you were photographing barcodes for students and you just need to be able to access that code information so you can filter the images and uh, once you've exported them again, no need for this information for a majority of us. And now we get into the status of the image. Now, this is where you title uh, your image if you choose to do that. Um, again, I don't really use that information. What I recommend everyone uses in this segment is the credit line. The credit line, you should put your name, your company, whatever. And the reason is this gives you credit for your image. All right. This is saying that you created the image. This is saying who the credit goes to for the image. Uh, this is typically always going to be the same person or company not always the case but typically i'll say nine times out of ten now this is where i think everyone should pay attention is the copyright you're going to put copyright and then the year and your name this is going to help you with the protection of your images. And I'm not a lawyer, so please consult with a lawyer if you run into some challenges. Uh, however, this will help that lawyer uh, defend you or go and, you know, seek whatever, uh, whatever they got to for damages of, of your photo being inappropriately used. With that being said, if you're on a Mac like I am, hold down the option key and hit the letter G. This is going to give you the little copyright symbol. It's 2021 right now. And then my name is Chris <clears throat> and Scott. Boom. Now, the next thing is the usage terms. I always put all rights reserved and you can even go as far as license needed. I'm not going to put that in there. Whatever the usage of this particular image is for your uh, needs, put that in there. 
The last thing is the URL. So I am going to copy and paste this right up in there. Now let's take a look at the location tab because that's everything on the IPTC tab, which stands for International Press Telecommunications Council. All right. Don't worry about what it, the name is. Just make sure the information is accurate. All right. That's the best way that I can explain that. Now we'll click on location. Location, as you can see, shares some of the information from the IPTC tab, which is awesome because on one doesn't make you retype redundant data. You can also add in GPS, altitude and direction. Again, I don't have any need for that, but one cool thing on the location, if you're doing this for a batch of images and they're all shot in the same location, maybe you'll want to put the name of the park. All right. Or name of location in the city, whatever. I can't remember the name of this park, but it's not really important for what I'm doing. Now I have all of my information filled out for my metadata. What I'm going to do is hit the drop down here, come over to save new preset. This is going to bring up a dialog box where it's going to ask me, what do I want to save? Now I leave them all checked and just exclude the things that I don't want to save to the metadata, which for me is going to be keywords because my keywords change quite frequently and these aren't generic enough for me to keep in there. The description, because again, the description changes and ratings and labels, get rid of this. You don't need to save that, especially if you've already worked and cold on your images, it's going to mess up it's going to mess some stuff up. Right. So just get rid of ratings and labels. And then I don't also, I also don't need GPS or user comment because again, I don't use those. So there's no point in me leaving those boxes checked. However, in all of these segments down here, I have actually entered some information. So I'm just going to hit okay. Oh, before you hit okay, make sure you type a name in there and I'm going to call this test number two because I already have a test in there and there you have it. Test two is the metadata that I have on this particular image. So if I came over to this image here, you can see that the metadata is empty. I can hit the drop down now, click test two and guess what? All of my metadata that I had with the exception of description and keywords, because I got rid of that. Uh, it does keep your name as the author and creator because when you put a name in here for creator, it also puts the same name as author. All right. I'm not sure if that can be changed, but by default, when you type a name in creator, it also puts it in author. All right. So that is the metadata tab in a nutshell. Hopefully this video was helpful. And if you are interested in more videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you already have a thank you for your support. And I hope that I can keep on bringing more videos just like this to help make on one photo raw just a little bit easier to use. So until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.